I'd like to call our February 27th, uh, 2012 regular meeting to order. May I have roll call, please? Mr. Thede? Present. Mrs. Buckley? Here. Mrs. Crow? Here. Mr. McLaughlin? Here. Mr. Kudrick is absent. Excuse. Mrs. Funderburg? Here. Teresa Beard? Here. Please stand for Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, next on the agenda is consent agenda. All matters listed under the consent agenda are considered to be routine in nature by the Board of Education and will be acted upon by one motion. There will be no separate discussion on these items. If any board member or any citizen requests discussion of an item, that item will be removed from the consent agenda and will become the first item of business under the report of the superintendent portion of the agenda. A, approval. To approve the minutes of the regular meeting of the Board of Education, January 23rd, 2012, and study session of February 13th, 2012. B, approval. To approve the personnel actions as submitted by Rebecca Peck, Director of Human Resources, resignation, uh, GSRP classroom assistant, retirement, special education paraprofessional, recall, student aid, and categorical aid. C, approval. To approve the bills for payment as submitted by Sherry Papazoglu, Director of Business and Operations in the amount of $2,731,691.16. D, approval to approve the proposed field trip for the Barth Elementary fifth graders to Camp Tamarack in Ortonville, Michigan on May 1st through the 4th, 2012 at no cost to the district. Need a motion. Madam President, I make a motion that we approve the consent agenda as presented report. Uh, motion by Mrs. Buckley, supported by Mrs. Kraut. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. The motion uh, carries 5-1. Okay, we are at the report of the superintendent. Okay, first on my agenda um, is um, recognition of Principal Week. Um, uh, a slightly overdue Principal's Week was a couple weeks ago, but uh, we talked about it at our study session, and, um, and we wanted to make sure that we recognize our principals for all the work that they do. Um, so what I would like to do before we ask the board for an official resolution is if I could just read the <coughs> resolution from the state of Michigan. Um, this is from uh, Governor Snyder. On behalf of the people of Michigan, I, Rick Snyder, Governor of Michigan, to hereby proclaim February 13th through February 17th, 2012, as Principal Week. Whereas energetic and inspiring school leadership is essential of teachers in schools um, and districts, are to implement college and career preparatory standards and assessments for Michigan students and whereas K-12 school principals play a vital role in the success of students and act as the liaison between the school and the community it serves, ensuring that parents and taxpayers are aware of student and school achievements and whereas Michigan school principals are dedicated quality educational professionals committed to providing sound leadership and guidance to their staff and students and Whereas during this week, we join with educators, parents, and students throughout the state to raise awareness of the importance of educational leadership and to recognize and thank all principals working in Michigan school districts for their exemplary service. Now, therefore, I, Rick Snyder, Governor of Michigan, do hereby proclaim Monday, February 13th through Friday, February 17th, uh, 2012, as Principals Week in Michigan. And, uh, you know, we have one of our uh, principal representatives with us tonight, Ms. Dorothy West from Hale Creek. And um, on behalf of, of the board and the administration, we do appreciate all of the principals, and I know you'll share that message for us, um, <laughs> as well as a little token of our appreciation. Um, so with that said, um, I'd like approval of our uh, motion. I move that the Board of Education adopt the certificate of proclamation from Governor Snyder designating February 
Principal Support. Uh, motion by Ms. Kraut, supported by Mr. Thede. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 6 0. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda, um, we wanted to give you um, an update on, on our meat data. The, the embargo was lifted a couple weeks ago, and this is our first opportunity. And uh, we have um, Dr. Daniels, our um, supervisor of grants and curriculum, has put a, a very nice presentation. And um, this is uh, uh, Dr. Daniels is the third curriculum director in the five and a half years that I've been here. And everybody kind of puts their own spin on things. And everybody does this presentation a little bit differently. And um, I always like to kind of see the presentation ahead of time and, and tell a little bit about the history. But I think you're in for a special treat tonight. First of all, the news is pretty good. Um, second of all, um, I think you'll, you'll get some things out of this presentation um, that you wouldn't have seen in, in previous presentations. Not that there was anything wrong with those. But um, this is a new set of eyes looking at things a little bit differently. Um, so with that said, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Daniels. Good evening. Good evening. Um, Dr. Daniels, if you could grab the mic, please. Is um, it over there? I'm not sure it's out. Come on, Steve. I don't see it here. <laughs> so that our viewers at home can hear you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you very much. Bear with me. I've got one of those colds that's a result of this weather. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as we shared earlier, um, we are now looking at our MEEP scores through a different lens. And um, they are, we're, we're the, the cut scores that have been applied are those that are more stringent. And they are the ones that truly um, represent how our students are on their way and on the path to career and college readiness. Um, be it that they're going to college or going to um, pursue those um, the, the education needed for those careers that are coming up. So the scores that you're going to be seeing are a reflection of, of the new set of scores. First, what we have is um, a look at how our elementary schools did. This is an aggregate of all of our buildings. In the, the blue is the reading. Uh, in the red is the math, and this represents the percentage of students who are proficient in those two areas at the elementary level. Now what you have at the bottom, that represents the gain or loss that we had over last year. And you'll see that in the third grade we gained 5% um, uh, proficient and 12% in math. In reading for the fourth grade, two percent, and we had a ha, we had a dip in our our math, uh, but in the fifth grade we had gains in both reading and in math. And in looking at that, that's comparing scaled scores. So it's how the kids really did. So that's an apples to apples, you know, look. At the middle school. <laughs> And you need to know that the, the grading um, is not equal, but this is how when you do it with the computer, it, sh it kicks it out so that it, it, it looks like a really big hike and the other one maybe not so much, but it's, that's not the case. Uh, for middle school, um, you'll see that we had for, again, in the, the blue is the reading, 48%. Uh, 36 and 46 percent in sixth, seventh, and eighth grades. Um, in math, 10 percent, 8 percent, and 12 percent. And when you look at the gain and loss, you see that we made gains across the board in reading. However, in math, we had dips. In social studies, this is. Um, you know, because there was not a, a comparison over the years, there's just one, one showing. But for our district score, we decreased 5%. But in the state, there was a decrease of 4%. So everyone dropped, you know, in social studies. Now, this represents how Romulus 
compares to the other schools in the county. And we are the red strip on this, and the county average is the blue strip. So you see, in some places we're a little higher, in some places we're a little lower, but nowhere are we truly out of kilter from you know where things are going along. And that's one of the things you, you want to take a look at to see because that helps us make some determinations on the areas where we're just way out of whack or whether it's kind of everyone in, in general. So that's, that's where we are here. Now, this is a comparison looking at the state and the county on the gain-loss comparison for reading. And if you'll notice, um, Romulus did a pretty good, we, we outscored the state in a number of areas or in a number of grade levels in, in our gains for reading. Um, especially you see at the third grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, and eighth grades. In math, not quite the same picture, but <coughs> you'll find that um, our gains and losses in math did not compare quite the same. So we know that this is going to be one of those target areas for us, you know, to take a look at. One of the main goals, however, you know, we look at the scores and say this is how many of our students were proficient. But the state now and the, and the and the federal government has moved into looking at, at growth. How are we moving all of our students? You know, so are we being able to ensure that there's that forward motion for everyone? And, and that is what we're looking to do, make sure that there's movement. So in this next report, first of all, I want you to remember, these are the four proficiency levels, okay? We've got not proficient, and that's the red. We don't want anyone there partially proficient, but then the two green areas, proficient and advanced, that's where we want all of our students to be. But what the state now is starting to look at is how we are moving our students. So let's say Paula was not proficient last year, but this year I didn't get to proficient, but I got to partially proficient. That's movement. And now that counts for us. If I was partially proficient last year and moved up to proficient or advanced, that's still movement. Ultimately, our goal is to get all of our students up into the green. But we're now looking at and recognizing the effort that you know, teachers are putting forth and, and our, our administrators and helping make sure that we guide things so that we're moving progressively upward. So. What this set of information provides for you is the percentage of our students who are either maintaining at that proficient or advanced level or moving towards it, okay? So they're either maintaining being proficient or moving toward it. And the way these scores are, these percentages are, are determined you see the second row where, there's, where the numbers like 149, 110, 167, mm -hmm. and, and across. <coughs> Those are the number of students who either are maintaining at that proficient level or moving upward. And it's based upon students who were matched. And what matched means is they were able to get the scores of students who tested last year and match it directly with students this year, not just general, but